thanks Ray Schulte for setting it up and thanks uh, Chris Corbellini for handling AV duties at the Mint Collective. Here's a conversation with uh, Josh Luber. Thanks sponsors, Tops Panini Upper Deck, especially Tops, <laughs> owned by Fanatics now. Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, Compsy.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So here it is. Enjoy. I've done a lot of nonprofits and things like that, and friends of friends. My new goal is to influence the influencers, of which I like that. Your influence were the capital I. You know, so leadership is what they thought about in my generation, and now it's more influencing. You don't have to worry yeah. about having soldiers behind you. But you still need followers. But they're not following, marching at the same. And they're doing their own uh, yeah. gate. They're smart enough to, to pick up and who they want to and why. And, and what. The ones at the front of the parade are smart enough. The ones at the back are just going along because they're okay. thinking, hey, where's everybody going? Yeah. yeah. Right. And we'll welcome them into this industry. Oh. Fanatics will welcome them into this industry. Absolutely. Yeah, this needs to be open to everyone. They come in exactly. Yeah, sure. But there are some opinion shapers. That's right. And... I think a lot of them are at this show right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's great to have everyone in, in one place and, and everyone's motivated to be here, so. The test is next year. This, this next year? Because there's still a few people that weren't here this year. That's right. And if more people come next year, that's the measure of success. Other than financial success would be nice, I'm sure I'd like this part as well. Yep. There's an event in the sneaker world called Complex Time which was started by a company called Complex. But Complex is, honestly, they're, they're from a brand standpoint. Beckett, early on, they were actually a magazine. They became a, a website. But they were like the center of, of culture for that. And they created an event called Complex Town. And the first year was half as many people. It was known. But the people that were there were all like, oh, this matters. And next year, it was like 10 out. Exactly. I think that's just what happens, actually. I think this next year, I don't know, 10X, we don't have the people in the hobby yet to do it. But I don't think anyone's missing this. One of the things I'm excited about with you being involved personally is that I think there are some parallels, not exact, but there's a lot to be learned from the sneaker world oh, yeah. and the card world. They can each yeah. benefit each other. Yep. If they both try to meld it or do it the same way, okay. no bueno. Yeah, 100%. So but you bring passion for both. And that learning, because I, I, in some ways, sneaker action, some of the dynamic elements. So many similarities. In fact, I, I mean... And the scrambling... The, the people, it was so much. There was a moment as we started to add trading cards to StockX when some of our biggest sneaker sellers, we were just starting to add trading cards. Some of our biggest sneaker sellers started to email us say, hey, can you tell us when the latest prison is dropping at Target? Hey, can you tell us when products are Because they were going to send their people to camp outside of Target the same way they were doing a full locker. They didn't care about the product. Yeah, yeah. They're business people. They op- understood the arbitrage. They understood it. And I was like, okay, I get that. Yeah, the same. 100%. However... It's nuanced. So they send people there. That uh, the uh, indiscriminate business model. Uh, everything's going to go up. We've seen that in, in the last two years. Up correction. Up correction. Net net up. Yes, net net up. And and people understand it. By the way, I should say thank you very much for the kind words. I, I saw that you read my white paper and and commented on it. Thank I you. Just finished it. I, I read it twice, oh, the, Josh. The, the the one from yesterday or from No, I okay. haven't seen that yet, but the one There's the, a new one. 60 page one. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Um, I thought I like I said I thought there was a love letter to the hobby. Oh, a thousand. Of a guy that uh, a vision guy that's going to be um, it's daunting when you're a vision guy and then you articulate your vision, then you're going to be called to execute. And I think you can and will. But uh, be exciting to see what happens. But laying out the roadmap, you know, what I did, it's not exactly similar, but I, I thought if I'm staying true to my mission, I'm not caring about who else is going to try to do what I'm going to do. Because right. I'm going to do it first, and I'm going to do it better. And I think that's the same attitude you have. No, you're laying right. it out, and they're so like, whoa, somebody is going to jump ahead of you? Good luck. Yep. They're not you. They don't have the, the, the structure in place. Yep. So that's what I felt. I feel like you're doing something that's... Uh, it's not manifest destiny, but if there's some aspect of mm-hmm. we're, we're on mission here. A thousand percent. You're, what you just said is, I say all the time that ideas are worthless, that execution is the only thing that matters. And I'm more than happy to tell everybody everything that we're planning to do. There are no secrets there. In StockX, we didn't make that up. We, we copied how the stock market works. It is about execution. It's, by the way, that's why it's exciting for me to be able to partner with Fanatics and yeah. the resources we have there. And, and they have 85 million customers in their Already, database, sports yeah, no. customers, right? And they are, they're potential card and memorabilia people. They already are 
Yeah, yeah, but you're right, and I, I appreciate that. That's the goal. Is no, that I think I was a vision guy and an execution guy, and I'm just wondering how, what you take on this. Is that, but I don't like maintenance. <laughs> what I had to do is I don't want to do the same thing. I can execute, but what I had to do for myself, I'm wondering if you, again, resonate with this, yeah. is that I had to make each new price guide or each new magazine or each new book like a new project that I had to bring some additional spice to it or something so that it'd be a new thing otherwise if it's maintenance yeah i'm just gonna get bored yeah or are you yeah you know, i get that but sometimes i, I talk about challenge yeah i talk about that like i either can operate otherwise, all the way up because uh, i feel like i need to operate all the way up here or all the way down here i get to come here and, and sit here and, and do an yeah. interview with you i was got to be on stage with peyton manning this morning i spent the last five days basically not sleeping writing the second version of a white paper yeah. and by the way i wouldn't let anyone else do that because that's part that's important and that and, and but everything in the middle yes that's why and by the way we have an unbelievable team like the yeah. what we've been able to put together so that's the best part about this is to be able to have the resource to put in an amazing team and why well, an amazing team too but i think you must have done a better job than i did of not allowing yourself to get kicked upstairs I got kicked upstairs, I, and it was the right thing to do, but yeah. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Are you going to be in that? I replaced myself as CEO at StockX, yeah. and in a lot of ways, it was the best thing that I ever did. There were things that I regretted about it, different decisions I could have made or whatever, and, and you feel a certain way, but like I knew I didn't want to be the CEO of a public company, which is where oh. they're about to IPO and, and go that direction. We'll see how this evolves and, so and your life goes. Back. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't be happier about that. But it's hard to say we're going to let him go be the CNO. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing when it's your thing and you start. And Well, the person that took over for you is going to make the next 10 decisions they're going to make. Nine of them you're going to agree with. with and the 10th one you're going to lose sleep over unless you just say, yeah. you got nine out of 10. Is there any one of those that you look back on that you look at back at and you say, God. Well, it, it's a loaded question because it's, uh, it's in hindsight. Yeah. Now I can look back and say, if I knew today was going to come, not being here, but just the whole aspect yeah. of the last couple of years. I've said in in, in a memorabilia, you shouldn't have sold anything ever. Yeah. You've sold on to it, including your company that has your name on it, which you started something that didn't have your name on it, but I did. That's an interesting. And it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, you know, so I, I, I want to bring credit to my name and to the to the successor ownership sure uh, i don't want to step on their toes but nine out of ten things they do i probably agree with and the tenth one i just yep no i i get that part as well yeah. Yeah. yeah i have a friend who's in fashion and he sold his brand and it's got his name on it yeah. and he's not there running anymore and it's a very my big, awkward position my big mistake was not writing something into the contract when i sold it gave me a five cent royalty every time my name is used. Okay? And I would be, I already am a wealthy man, but I'd be wealthier, probably much wealthier, if I could use ka-ching every time somebody did something. That's good. That's good. Do you see any other data businesses, people doing interesting data stuff in the hobby? Because I want to know everyone doing anything interesting. I thought you might maybe have the best point of view on other. I know a couple of you. Know, I told you, I'm, I'm a pro bono consultant. Yeah. So you're asking for a pro, right. but I don't hold back. But my limitation is I only do an hour. And I'm not even going to do an hour with you, so you'll have some minutes in the bank. But the goal of Fanatics and, and almost everything that you're doing or anybody in here is doing is to make the pie bigger. If the yes. pie's bigger, yes. then the exciting thing, so I'm going to flip your question. Because if the pie is bigger to the tune of $85 million or whatever, then we've got a lot of rich data that then further mine. Yes. So it's looking backwards to mine the data now. We need to not be serving our current customers as much as we need to be serving our future customers. Yep. And the more you can crack that code, yep. then when you double and triple the size of the market, then the data analytic possibilities are going to be... Uh, amazing. As a presenting sponsor, they're being more cooperative than they certainly were back when I was around because they see this as a big category. They're more engaged than they were two years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and they should be. Yeah. And they should be. Yeah. So, no, I, so I agree. About that. Who would be upset if there's twice as many collectors yeah. in a couple of years? No one. Yes. That, that is that's, 100%. That's, that's a, a reasonable goal. I want to contribute to that. You're on the hot seat somewhat there. But it's achievable. Yeah. It's not I, a stretch I, goal. I don't think so at all. I don't think it, it's in any way unrealistic. But it's not it's just, doing the yeah. same stuff. No, it's not at all. I don't know if you, you had a chance to see, but just last week we released a, a trading card brand for culture called Zero. And 
totally different audience. Like, I get it that a lot of sports card collectors may not, but that's okay. But, like, the audience that it was for, they loved it. And prices were through the roof and a second day, but that's okay. And if those people then get a little bit more exposed, and some of them happen to also right. be sports fans and bring it over. So we're trying to figure out, like, how do we get other audiences while also, you know, growing? Sports will always be first and foremost, but, yeah. you know, those other audiences are, are going to be important to grow. A lot of the 20th century stuff was you could get away with being monolithic. Nowadays you can't. It's completely decentralized. Yep. And the fact that some people are going to think zero cool is not for them, it's not even a bad thing, especially if they talk about it. Right. Oh, about even it not better. being for them. Yes. Or I would like it if it was doing done this way for the subject matter that I like. So, again, that decentralization and that fraction, it's a fractional, that's the theme of the show. Oh, well, yeah. But fractionalizing and splitting things up and making it a, a, an organism instead of this monolithic, giant, immovable object. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your point on that. And I'm not the customer. No, but that's great. Because your I'm not point is... No, and, but by the way, it's okay for those customers that do, because most of the time, if the product's not for them, they just ignore it. They're not part of it. Right. Great, this is over here. I don't... But well, the fact that they're, they're talking about it, great. The people that may be... Inter- like, it's great. The press we've had off of that, both positive and negative, it's all cool. Especially if they that. say what they don't like about it. Yeah. Then when it tells I, when me, I used it tells to get, when, me I, a roadmap. when I got non-specific criticism, it was so yeah. frustrating. Just tell me, okay? Don't say I didn't like it. Give, give me the reason, and I can deal with that. And I think you're not the customer for that. Or, hey, you've got an interesting point there. Next iteration, we'll go that way. But there's so many alternatives in the industry now, That's and right. it was music to my ears that fanatics is not going to be just only sports. I think sports centric is good. It sounds oh, like collectible has sure. that too, but. That's right. All these other things. In fact, when basketball gets too high, which I'm editorializing here, but basketball got too high. Oh, yeah. In many cases. And so did people say, I'm out of here? They said, no, I, I'm going to move over to football or baseball or hockey or Marvel. Or right. Or, no, or, or Marvel or, might be too high right now. We'll see how that corrects. Well, that, I know, but that's the perspective you need to have. Yeah. And this unbridled optimism, this irrational exuberance That's, yeah. that, that Tom Brady could never go down, or Mickey Mantle could never go down, or Babe Ruth could never go down. That's dangerous. Yeah. It's always, would I rather have this Babe Ruth, or this Michael Jordan, or this Tom Brady, or Peyton Manning, or anybody else? There's always going to be this, and it's not arbitrage, it's just you're trying to figure out, it starts with, you've got something I want, and I'm going to try to make a deal with you. Yeah. And the fact that there isn't a Beckett Price guide that's more universally used anymore, or even eBay comps, that adds a dynamic element to it that's positive. Yeah. That dy- dynamism is something that's that other hobbies don't have. Yeah. They're static. Do you static think, is bad. 100%. Do you think that the crash of last year in the second quarter taught enough people a lesson from that to not think that everything's going to keep going up and, and to the right? A lot of people. I don't know if you have this, but if you smooth that for that three-month period, the first quarter of 2021, there's no crash. Right. Only there's that's only right. a peak. There's a, that's right. So I'm unwilling to call it a crash. Uh, a correction, certainly. Yeah. People just like they did with our magazines back in the 80s and the 90s. They thought if that's it's going up, which again is an assumption. And so if it's this now, next month, I'm comfortable with paying double because it doubled last month. That gets you in trouble. Except when it doesn't. And it's like Vegas. When you come home from Vegas, nobody talks about how much money they lost. They're not a random sample. They talk about how much money they made, and they're not even telling the truth. Same thing. If somebody has a big score on on the break or on the cards that they bought, they're not talking about that they bought Zion at the peak and, and they, and they, instead of Ja. And, but again, that's all good because it means that little bit of unpredictability makes it can make it fun. Oh, it still makes it an alternative. Yeah. But it means the kid, the younger kid, the, the even the twenty-something kid with not a lot of business experience, but really digs into the sport and the hobby, can compete with the mature, sixty-year-old, deep-pocketed baby boomer. Yeah. And that is cool. That it's is cool. awesome. It, it, it's awesome. It's, it's so much. It's fun. unbeatable. I think. So, much fun. so I know you're not going to mess it up. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. As long as it's not treated as a commodity, it'll never be treated.